Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. We've amazingly just hit our crowdfunding goal for the South Africa paleontology field trip, but it's not over yet. We still need to raise a little bit more to be secure, and the more we raise, the more we'll all be able to do while we're there. So keep sharing the crowdfunding link around where you can. Starting off the news this week, the MAST upgrade facility has its official opening ceremony today, after results from the experiment have given more hope for fusion power, as researchers say they have found a way to remove excess heat 10 times better than before. The MAST upgrade facility is a UK-based experimental project which aims to find a way to produce a commercial level of power from nuclear fusion, which is seen as one of the next great steps forward in science. It's the same process that happens inside stars, including our own sun of course, and there are very high hopes on its capabilities to produce an astounding amount of clean energy. This latest breakthrough is but one more step in creating smaller and cheaper fusion reactors. In other news, a story from the Galapagos, as a species of tortoise that had been thought to have been extinct for over a century has been found. Genetic tests done on a female tortoise from 2019 have been compared to remains of a male and confirmed that this tortoise is indeed a living Chelonoidus fantasticus, which was last sighted all the way back in 1906. Don't worry, they haven't lost the female, she's still alive and well in a breeding centre on Santa Cruz and is believed to be over a hundred years old. Perhaps even more excitingly, scientists have found what they believe to be evidence of more of the same species in the wild, which is great news. And now over to Ben, who has a new story for you. Thanks Doug. Also in the science news of this last week has been a brilliant paper that has found some good evidence for the hypothesis that at one point in whale evolution, both baleen and teeth occurred at the same time in the mouths of baleen whales. These whales, technically called Mr. Seeds, do actually have teeth when they're embryos, but they are then born without any and instead use keratin bristles, baleen, to filter feed. However, by CT scanning and looking at certain openings in the bones of the roof of the mouth in a prehistoric Mr. Seed called Aetiocetus, paleontologists have found signs that these openings connected to a canal similar in fashion to what is seen in living Mr. Seeds. They also found different, separate connections that would have supplied blood to teeth in the upper jaw, like those in living toothed whales leading them to conclude that this neurovasculature was secondarily repurposed in the Mr. Seat lineage as they became associated with baleen. So basically, Aetiocetus and likely other prehistoric Mr. Seats would have had both baleen and teeth at the same time, showing that the transition to a fully filter feeding lifestyle occurred in a stepwise fashion, going from teeth alone to teeth and baleen and then finally just baleen. Well, I've got to go and do an exam now, so back to Doug in the studio. Good luck with that. Well, that's it for this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you on Sunday.